Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Richie from Boston. Today is the 12th of January, 2018, and I am joined once again by the infamous L.A. Marzulli. L.A., how are you doing, brother? I'm good, Richie. Thanks for having me in here. I'm not sure about infamous, but I'll uh, I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I was telling you before we hit the button, um, I saw I was watching Brian, Brian Forrest to put up a new video and I couldn't believe it that you've got a forensics expert. You've got a whole team in and you guys are actually going for this. You're going to prove one way or the other that these elongated skulls are not frauds. Let's call it that. OK, um, yeah, it's uh, it's also up on my YouTube channel, L.A. Marzulli. Please go and subscribe to that. We're about 71,000 and, and climbing. Uh, but yeah, Brian is certainly part of the team. In some ways, he was the one that called my attention to it when I saw a YouTube video of Brian uh, handling these enigmatic Paracas skulls. And what's, you know, from that, uh, that was in 2013. So it, it's been a while, and we've been on the trail of the so called Nephilim uh, for years now. And uh, Mondo Gonzalez is our resident archaeologist. And then, of course, we've got. Uh, Rick Woodward, who's an anthropologist. Dr. Michael Alde is a is an MD. Dr. Malcolm Warren is a chiropractor. Chase Klotsky was our forensic field expert. Richard Shaw, the director and filmmaker of the Watcher series, filmed everything and, and keeps us honest as far as like a uh, video. Paleo DNA Lab in Canada provided all the uh, all the full body suits that we wore. We got permission from the Minister of Culture in Peru, which took years to get. Uh, from the Ica Museum. We flew down to Peru with the team and uh, we extracted DNA. We now have over, well over 40 samples which we've tested. And the wow. results, the results of those, of that testing will be uh, a, a formal press conference February 2nd. We are in the process of setting up live streaming for that. And the way you want to check that out is just go to my website, lamarzuli.net lamarzuli.net, there'll be a link to live streaming. And we're going to charge for it. And the reason for this is <clears throat> um, we've got a benefactor who basically gave us a lot of money to do this. This is not cheap. Just to, just to bring the team down for a week in Peru is about fifteen to $20,000. You've got airfare, you've got hotel costs. I mean, everything. It just, it just adds up. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. So we're asking so people know um, this money will go back into our DNA fund. That's what we call it, Amitrail DNA. Um, we are also going to release a book, a small booklet, where each of the people that I just mentioned contributed, including myself. Richard Shaw also contributes. And uh, that will be for sale along with the DVD of the entire presentation. That will be for profit. Um, you know, we need to grease the wheels here too. But the live streaming... Uh, will be available very shortly. You'll be able to sign up for that. Uh, we've also, the Marriott Hotel at LAX has comped us a larger room. So now instead of only 75 seats, we have room for about 250 because the 75 seats sold out within like a, a few hours. So, and that's free. So um, we're very excited by this. Everyone will be presenting. The, the press conference will be from one to five. We feel it's groundbreaking. I wouldn't be doing this if we didn't have the goods. Someone whom I won't mention wrote me a nasty email calling it my Nephilim fantasy. And let me state this right up front. In the scientific method, of which you know, I don't, I'm not degreed in this, but I do know what it is. You have a hypothesis. You state your hypothesis. What, what's your hypothesis? Our hypothesis is this, that 3,500 years ago, when Joshua and Caleb were pressing the conquest of, of Canaan, which is a biblical event, which is also recorded in the Dead Sea Scrolls and also Josephus. When they went into the Promised Land, there were different tribes with, with seemingly different genetic characteristics. Um, one of them were called the Terrible Ones. Another one was called the Long Necks. So um, some of them were giants, we feel, but not all were giants, perhaps. We don't know. That it's very It's very sketchy. The bottom line is when... Joshua and Caleb and the children of Israel went into the promised land and this, this prosecuting the war. It is our hypothesis that some of these tribes may have fled the area. There was a diaspora. They fled for their lives. Some went northward into Europe and perhaps came over and, and touched down, believe it or not, in Ohio. 
If and, and if so, would we see evidence of that? And in my opinion, we do. Read on the trail of a Nephilim. Um, it, it's everywhere. But others, according to Thor Heyerdahl, could have built a reed boat, a reed boat, and sailed out the, the, the delta, the Nile Delta, into the Mediterranean. The trade winds will blow you without doing anything, just setting a sail, no compass, no map. The trade winds will blow you to the island of Barbados. Barbados is in the New World. And that's what we think happened. That is our hypothesis. So if that's true, do we see evidence of this? And in my opinion, we see evidence all through the Americas. But that brings us to the Paracas. Paracas is on the west coast of Peru. These are where, let me just show you guys something. Hold on. These are where the greatly elongated skulls. I was just at a conference, and I'll just show you guys something. This is our one of our latest uh, skulls in the collection here. This is called the cinnamon skull. And uh, Jared Collins was nice enough to, to allow us to do DNA testing right here. Now, it's not a giant. See that? It's, it's not a giant, but it, it's very, very large. The skull is very greatly elongated. And standard archaeology tells us that all this is the result of cradle headboarding. Cradle headboarding is when you take – this is not real, by the way. It's a cast, a one-to-one -one cast. Cradle headboarding is when you take material and you bind it, you tie it to a child's head, and, and you shape the head. And, and we, we get that. I mean, we, we, totally, we totally understand – that, that this is a real um, um, practice that was done not only by uh, certain tribes in Peru, but by um, other, other tribes, other Amerindians um, in, in North America. So we know that, that that cradle headboarding exists. It has been our hypothesis that not all the skulls, many of the skulls, are not cradle headboarded. A few things that you'll, you'll discover right off the bat, there's, there's something called a sagittal suture. These are sutures right here. This is a suture. It's a suture right. line. And what it does is it connects the frontal plate, which is here, right, to the occipital plate, which is actually here. But the suturing, you talk to a, um, a, a medical doctor, which, of course, we have. He's part of our team. The suturing is all wrong. There should be a suture that goes from the frontal plate here, right here, all the way uh, across the ridge to the rear plate called the occipital plate. This is called a sagittal suture. It's absent from this skull, as it is many of the skulls. Now, people say, you know, it's so funny how we, we, we keep adding and adding and adding to the evidence, and that's what I'll be doing in this little presentation. There is a disease called craniosynatosis, which usually happens later on in life with, with age. And what that does is it fuses the, the, the suture together of the sagittal uh, the sagittal suture, it, it, it fuses that together so you don't see too much of a trace. But we're saying that many of these skulls, this is a female probably 25 to 26 years old based on the dentition. Um, so why does she have craniosynatosis? But wait, it gets better. There's something called the foramen magnum. The foramen magnum is where on a normal human being, Here's your spinal column. Let me use this pen because it's got it's got white. It will come. So here's here's your here's my my spinal column. It would connect to the center of, of my skull, not back here. It would connect roughly to the center, and that balances everything. Okay, that's how a normal skull is, human being is put together. Here we have the foramen magnum, which is right there. Okay, I'll put a stick in it. Right there. Oh See my. that? Oh my. Yeah. And the foramen magnum, here, here's, the, here's the end plate right here. Look at this. The foramen magnum is pushed as far back to the occipital plate right here as possible. See that? And that yep. we believe that you can't take and cradle board a child's head and push the occipital or yeah, push the occipital plate back to the foramen magnum. You would kill the child. And we've got not only a chiropractor, but our doctor, Dr. Michael Alday, as well as our anthropologist, Rick Woodward, who wrote a paper on this, stating on the record that this is genetic. So we've got lack of sagittal suture. We've got genetic uh, abnormalities within the Paracas skulls. And we'll be presenting all this, um, eight of us will be presenting um, at the conference. Chase Klotsky, our forensic field expert, who tagged and bagged everything, will be presenting. Brian Forrester will be there. He will be presenting. 
Mondo Gonzalez, our archaeologist, will be giving us the overview of the data of the DNA. Uh, Dr. Michael Alde will be talking about the placement of the foramen magnum as, as, as Rick Woodward, also on the foramen magnum, as, wow. as, uh, as our, um, our chiropractor, Dr. Malcolm Warren. What we're looking at, in my opinion, may be a subspecies of human beings as we know them. That's kind of what we're leaning to. More testing needs to be done. And here's the deal. I've been criticized. People say, oh, Marzulli's saying that these are a Nephilim. I'm not saying that they're anything. I don't know what they are. But our hypothesis is that this might be a Nephilim tribe. And get this. There's something, the Anakim, which is one of the Nephilim tribes, is called the Longnecks. Gee, Marcia Moore. <laughs> oh. our, yeah, Marcia Moore, who is our forensic artist, looked at the skull, no collusion with me. And she knows the placement of the foramen magnum. And without knowing anything about the Nephilim or what I was doing, figured out that in order for this skull, this, this entity to balance, the neck would have to be longer. And I, when she showed me this, I wrote her back and I said, are you familiar with who and what the Anakim were? She had no idea. And I said, the Anakim were a Nephilim tribe in the Middle East. And Anakim translates long necks. That's what it translates, long necks. Oh. Now, look, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence. Can I say this is a Nephilim? No, I can't. And, and until we get further proof and, and more, we, this, is, this is the problem. We have this much of a picture, which is this big, which is why more testing needs to be done. We are trying to raise funding to do a proper archaeological dig in the Chongos. The, the Paracas royalty, according to Senior Juan Navarro, who really put this all this stuff on the map years ago? That's where that he was Brian Brian's mentor. He passed away uh, in 2016, so we miss him greatly. Wonderful man, and he he appears in our watchers, but he he passed away, and the museum has now since moved and is run, um, you know, by his relatives in Paracas. You and we're, we're taking a tour there in July, of Peru. So we're going to go to the Paracas Museum as well as the Inca Museum, and then the other. Uh, uh, other museums. So you people will be able to see this stuff. And according to Senior Juan, the Paracas, the original inhabitants, which came about 3,500 years ago, which fits our timeline, are buried about 30 feet down in these tombs. And our what we're trying to do um, is get permission from the Minister of Culture and then conduct a proper archaeological dig. The quest is to get full-blown mummies, number one. Number two, that what we've learned with DNA the best place to get fresh, good samples is the rib cage, especially on a mummy, especially at Changos, because Changos is one of the driest places on earth. And the sand there has, has salt in it. So you've got this natural preservative. And this is why when we unwrap the baby skull, hold on, at Senior Juan's Office Museum, this is the museum, um, and this is all in our watchers film. This, this, this child was about, about um, two years old, about two wow. years old. All right. You see that? That's about crazy. Two years old. We don't believe this is cradle headboarded. When we unwrapped this, the hair was blondish red. The hair was immediately tagged and bagged by Chase Klotsky, sent to a DNA lab. When they examined the hair, and we've got carbon-14 on this. It's about almost 2,000 years old, 1,935 years old. Which is, which is the end of the Paracas. So who gets to unwrap a 2,000-year-old mummy skull? We do. It's all on film. We took the hair. We tagged and bagged it. When the, the, the DNA lab examined the hair, they were perplexed because the hair did not seem ancient. And what I tried to tell them was this thing was incredibly preserved in Shangos, wrapped in original mummy cloth and preserved in a place that's the driest, it gets it gets less than a quarter of an inch of rain a year, if that. And the sand has salt in it. So this is like perfectly preserved. More testing needs to be done. Again, I'll state on the record, we don't know what it is we're looking at here. We don't know. And you'll notice also, here's the foramen magnum right here, right, right, right there. I'll, I'll use this pencil right there. There's the foramen magnum right there. It's all the way, all the way in the back of the skull. And there are other, other artifacts, which other skulls that we have examined that have the same genetic trait. 
So we feel that it's genetic, and I haven't told you all of it yet, and I and I won't. I'm saving some of it for for the conference because you know we're we're trying to look. I'm not I'm not getting rich off this. Again, the live streaming will go back into our DNA fund, which is nonprofit. So all the money we make off the live streaming will go back to feed the kitty. Just the press conference alone will be upwards of twenty thousand uh. dollars. So all this, yeah, I've got live streaming. I got hotel costs. I'm flying everybody in. I got to feed everybody. Plus, I'm giving them a fight. You know, an honorarium for everybody who's speaking. I mean, you know, all this stuff. I just love all the snowflakes out there and expect all this stuff to happen for free. You know, it just drives me nuts. Well, you know, why don't you come and pay my mortgage? How does that sound? You know, it's just right. I can't. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine that you found an impartial DNA guy that's actually going to test this. That's phenomenal. Well, the, the Paleo DNA Lab just just I mean they work with us. We've worked with them for years, and we've got like I said over forty samples. Not all forty samples um, give us the result that we're hoping for, but a majority of them do, which is exactly what we should expect to see. And it is it is mind boggling. Now all we have is the haplogroups, which which tell us the origin of these people, where they came from. We've got the haplogroups, no nuclear DNA. No nuclear DNA at all. That's the prize. And what we're hoping for when we get the nuclear DNA is unknown primate, which now that opens up even more can of worms, right? Unknown primate. What does that mean? And does that would that would that um, validate the Nephilim theory? Possibly, possibly. I mean, we need more. A lot more study needs to be done. We've only scratched the surface, and it's to the best of our knowledge, no one. The best of my knowledge, okay? Now, maybe someone has done this, but no one has compiled a team like this. Archaeologist, anthropologist, medical doctor, chiropractor. So you got multidiscipline people looking at this and stating like, uh-uh, some, this isn't right. You know, an archaeologist looks at it and they're taught that all of this is cradle headboarding. We're saying some of it's cradle headboarding, not all of it. And, and it begs the question, why, why are these people uh, emulating this elongated skull. What about it? Are they? Are they? Do, why are they doing? Why? Why do they get up at two in the morning and cradle board your two-year-old to elongate its head? What? What? What for? Why? Why are you doing this? So there's there's a very very deep mystery, and it's not so cut and dry like like mainstream archaeologists will tell us. They always go immediately. They go, oh, it's all cradle headboard. Well, how do you know that? How can you possibly make a statement? Have you had an anthropologist look at the skull? Right. Have you have you had a, a medical doctor look at the skull? What about the suturing? What about the odd suturing? What about the placement of the foramen magnum? And there are other morphological differences in the construct of the skull, which we find absolutely astounding, which is why Dr. Alde states on the record that he believes that these we might be looking at a subspecies. That's what that's that, that's from a medical doctor. So it's a multidiscipline team. You know, Brian Forster, who is who put this stuff on the map, he comes on the record and he'll be presenting. Chase Klotsky, our forensic field investigator, will be showing just how we collected the samples, the protocols that we use, which is actually from the Canadian uh, uh, Paleo DNA Lab. So this isn't some, you know, tinfoil hat thing, as you can see behind I love me. it. I love it. I was yeah. going to comment on that earlier. Beautiful. It's not, it's not like a tinfoil hat thing, although we'll be called that, I'm sure. This is hard science. We're going where the data has taken us. We're looking at the data, and we're, we're just telling you what we found at the press conference. The DNA data, the morphological differences. It is, like I said, it has raised more questions than given us answers to. Surely, if anyone, any fair-minded person is going to look at what we present, in my opinion, any fair-minded person will say, wow, there's a lot here. More research needs to be done. And that's exactly what we're hoping for. We need funding. And I'm not asking for $20 bills. Those are always great when people write in. You know, they add up. I get that. But there are people out there who, who are hearing me now that have deep pockets, that can write a check for $50 or $100,000 without batting an eyelash. If they believe in what we're doing, you know, if they believe in our research, if they if they want to find out more, like we want to find out more, we need funding, you know. And and by the way, folks, I don't I don't draw a salary from this. I, I don't take any money from this. Everyone who comes with me gets a paycheck. I don't, just because I don't feel that I should, because it you know it, it's just so we raised you know almost a quarter of a million dollars 
and people get paid, the labs gets paid, the people who come down and do the research, they get paid, but I don't get paid. I don't I don't draw, well, I'll take $1,000. I don't do that. Now with the DVDs from the press conference and the, and the book I'm making, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna re, you know, it's got under my publishing company. That's where I'm gonna take, try to take anyway, some reward for all this. But um, it's my passion, I love it. And uh, you know, we're asking those of you who are watching this, who have the means, and are able and believe in our research to, to fund this. You can go to lamarzuli.net, lamarzuli.net, little donate button. Just put for uh, for the Paracas elongated or the DNA study, and that's where the money will go. It amazes me that you're the only person that's ever gone this far with it, because this is literally going to prove the very first few pages of the Bible true. You know what I mean? It's it, there. There aren't even any. There's nobody down in Peru that's tried to go this far with it. No. Wow. No. Because I've Nobody. poured over this for years, man. You're the only one that I would keep coming back to. The, um, you know, it, it's been a team effort. Brian Forrester has been instrumental, but, but our hypothesis goes back to the Genesis six narrative. I mean, that's where originally it goes back to, and that's what we think. Something there's an outside agency that's commingling with with the human genome and creating hybrids. This essentially is a hybrid entity. It's a hybrid entity, and we don't know anything about them. You know, it's all speculation, but the science is, is showing us morphological differences in the DNA results so far is extremely telling. More study needs to be done. More, I mean, I can get on here and be sensationalistic. We found the Nephilim. Right. No, we haven't found the Nephilim. And I can't say it any, any plainer than that. We have a hypothesis. We're conducting the scientific method to prove that hypothesis. We brought in experts. And as we unravel this mystery, we'll bring in more experts. It's just like the curse of Oak Island, you know? I mean, these yep. guys, these guys, I love them. The Lagina brothers, they they travel with the evidence. They're looking at the evidence, just like Cunning Hitler was saying the same thing. They're looking at the forensics. They're, they're on the trail. We're on the trail. It's a mystery. We're on the trail. And we're, we're not quitting. This is only the beginning. It's taken five years to get to this point. Five years. In 2013, in January, that's when we went down for the first time. So it's been five years to get to this point. Time for the press conference. We have the information, and we'll be live streaming at lamarzuli.net, lamarzuli.net. You can pay for the live streaming, and then we'll also we have the book cover. or The book, it's more of a pamphlet. It'll be over 100 pages where everyone is writing about what they've discovered. And, of course, the DVD, which will have everyone's presentation on DVD. So if you can't catch the live streaming or you want something more permanent, that's, that's the way to go with DVD. Well, I've got every one of the watches series and your book, so I'm definitely down for it. When's the the the, the actual press conference is on the second of February? It's the second of February at the Marriott at LAX from one to five. Hmm. I might actually be able to make it there. I don't know. <laughs> I might. I mean, this is this is huge, man. This is absolutely huge. It's finally. We, we, we think it is. I mean, that's I do that's too. why we're holding the press conference. That's why we're. We're rolling out, you know, and uh, we've got Mandy Thompson who's doing all of our uh, PR work, try to get the word out, try to get the interviews, try to get the mainstream media interested in this because, you know, this is, this is hard science. We, we've, got, we've got problems here. What I mean by that, we've got, we've got information that goes against what we've all been taught. What are we looking at? We don't know what we're looking at, but we find it incredibly intriguing, and we're very, very curious. How many stone walls have you run into so far? Oh, we run into stone walls all the time. We have labs that will take our money to test, but don't want us to tell us the name of a lab. We can't do that because they're afraid. They're afraid of the ridicule. Right. Um, when we were down in Peru several several trips back, a couple of years back, and um, I remember at, at the uh, Julio Teo Museum, the former curator, the director of the museum, the director, not curator, the director of the museum, we had a we had an audience with her, and I asked her. I said, "Have any of these skulls been tested for DNA?" They've got three hundred mummies in that museum in the back room, which you never get to see. They've got ten thousand skulls. I said, "Have you done any DNA testing at all?" She said, "No." I about fell over. So there was one study that was done, but our archaeologist wrote that archaeologist and said, "On in your study, how many Paracas skulls did you take?" No answer. The guy won't answer him. So why won't he answer him? You know, how many elongated skulls from Paracas? So these people say, you know, you hear that the study's been done and the evidence, 
nonsense. No, it hasn't. And it's not a multidiscipline study. There's, you know, ar archaeologists, anthropologists, medical doctor, chiropractor. This is what makes our study, I think, the cutting edge research. And we're only, I can't reiterate this enough. This is the tip of the iceberg, just the tip of the iceberg. Well, it's amazing. It's amazing. I was so, so excited when that video popped up in my feed. I had to shoot you a text and I appreciate you coming on so quickly, man. This is amazing. I'm I'm excited for you. So this hopefully will validate a lot of what you've been doing over the I mean, I've been watching you, it seems like forever, man. <laughs> so I hope this actually does something. I hope this makes it to mainstream, but they're going to push back. We know that much. They do it oh, all yeah. the time. Uh, we're, we're, I mean, it's already started. We haven't even shown the evidence. And I had this one one clown yelling and screaming that, that you know, these aren't the Nephilim and this and that. How do you know? How do you know what they are? So right. anyway, it is what it is. But, Richie, thanks so much for having me on. Remember, folks, if you want to see the live streaming, lamarzuli.net. It's not up yet, but it will be up in a few days. LA I'll leave all the links in the description for the video. That's not a problem. And I'll cover this again before the for the uh, press conference. And like Great. I said, Wonderful. I might try to get out there. Thank you so much, Richie. God bless Anytime, you. Anytime, brother. We'll, we'll all talk right. Soon. Have a good one, LA. All righty. Bye-bye. Thank you.